Okay, I'd like to call to order the September 12th public uh, Hyde Park uh, Town Board meeting. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Acceptance of the minutes of August 15th and 22nd of 2022. I have second. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, any public comments on resolutions and town business only? Moving right along. Okay, public hearing for the proposed local law. Um, ask for a motion and a second to open the hearing regarding residential care facilities. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Donna, you want to read the public hearing notice as it appears in the newspaper? Notice of public hearing. Please take notice that the town board of the town of High Park shall conduct a public hearing on the introduction of proposed local law number C of 2022 entitled a local law amending the town of High Park code to amend chapter 108 zoning article 23 residential care facilities. On Monday, September 12, 2022 at 6 10 p.m. at the Hyde Park Town Hall, located at 4383 Albany Post Road, Hyde Park, New York, 12538. A copy of said local law is available for, for inspection at the town clerk's office during normal business hours and will be posted on the town's official website. All persons desiring to be heard on the local law shall be given an opportunity to do so at said public hearing. By order of the town board of the town of Hyde Park, Dated August 15th, 2022, Hyde Park, New York, Donna McGrogan, Town Clerk. Did we receive any comments? We received one, which each board member was given. Okay, does any of the public like to make any comments in this matter? Um, reason why uh, we are leaving the public hearing open until the special meeting is on, when is that? Monday. Monday. Um, because there was a lot of consultants got a little confused in writing this resolution. So it's uh, right now it's more conducive to just set it aside and we'll address it come Monday at the special meeting. Ask for a motion a second to continue the public hearing. I'd like to have a motion to continue the public hearing till Monday, September 19, 2022. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Was there a second for that motion? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Second for that? I'll second. second. Done. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Okay. We're going to pull the resolution from. So we need a motion and second. So we need a motion to pull the resolution I from motion. the agenda. Which okay. resolution number is it, please? It should be 12. 9, 12, 10. 12. Number 10. Okay. I so move to pull resolution 9-12-10 of 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. That's that one. Okay, uh, workshop. Now's for the workshop, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, uh, Lynn Ruggiero is going to do it, uh, represent for Hudson River Drinking Water Intermunicipal Council, Hudson 7. We'll discuss the requirements, changes for the council's intermunicipal agreement with the town of Hyde Park. Lynn? Thank you. Um, I'm lucky enough to say, be able to tell you that Gary Bassett is here from Hyde, uh, from Hyde Park, from <laughs> Brian Beck. Welcome to Hyde Park. <laughs> He's the chair, so I would like to just move over to that table so we could both sit down. Yes. So 
Now, the Hudson 7 is an um, intermunicipal council, you're going to help me, yep. <laughs> of seven um, municipalities uh, that use the Hudson River for drinking water. So the importance of this is that we need to keep it safe and clear so that our drinking water is something that we could always be, uh, be happy with. So uh, the, county, the towns are the town of Asopus, town of Hyde Park, town of Lloyd, town of Poughkeepsie, city of Poughkeepsie, village of Rhinebeck, and town of Rhinebeck. And Gary is the chair of the Hudson 7 committee. Is that? Council. Commission? Council. As a council. Council. And doing a wonderful job, <laughs> I would say. So uh, this is in development since 16? 2018. 18. Since 18. And um, Riverkeeper has been a major part of it, has been part of it on a temporary basis for five years. And now we want to move into independence in the sense of having a coordinator for Hudson Center, correct? Correct. Okay, so technically called a production, a protection coordinator, right, which would help us manage many of the projects that we have ongoing under the current council of the Hudson 7. So, as you said, there are many, including, as you're probably aware of, the cable that's coming down from Canada to go to New York City by way of the Hudson River. So that's a major concern right now that we're working on. So uh, this memora uh, memorandum of, um, of agreement is to have each of the municipalities contribute to this, um, the salary of this coordinator based on the number of people and the water usage me, per municipality. <laughs> okay, thank you. Per municipality. Um, the uh, county of Dutchess um, has agreed to $25,000. And with that, they want to be voting members. The county of Ulster has agreed to $25,000. And then the rest of the money would be divided up among the other municipalities. So what is recommended for Hyde Park is that we donate, uh, contribute, not donate, $5,000 a year for three years. Personally, I think that's a bargain for you know, keeping our drinking water safe. But I want to have Gary tell you a little more about the work of Hudson 7 before we decide. Sure. Thank you. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So the Hudson 7, as Lynn said, we formed this organization in May of 2018. It was really a collaboration that came about when, if you remember, when the barges were parking, were by the Coast Guard, were going to park on the river. And that was a huge concern to many of the municipalities along the river so i met with riverkeeper and said we got to figure out a way to kind of manage this because at the time the riverkeeper cared about the the fish and the stream and the habitats and all that kind of stuff and scenic huts and compared compared about the land but there was nobody that even thought at the time about what our what the impact would be to our drinking water in fact many people don't realize that there's over 100,000 people in this vicinity of these seven municipalities that get their drinking water from the Hudson River. So that makes us one of the six largest communities, if you wanted to put us all together, that draw our drinking water. And that's from five drinking plants, water treatment plants. We have the village of Rhinebeck, uh, which has a water treatment plant, the city and town of Poughkeepsie, which have the water, Hyde Park, Esopus, and the town of Lloyd. So we work together to try to say, what can we do to unite the water plants and also to share resources? But the second most important thing was, how do we protect the drinking water? So since 2018, we've really done a lot, a lot of work. And this council is represented by elected officials from each of the municipalities. So that's how you serve, serve on the council. And then we have a technical team and we currently have a project a person that's working as a project coordinator for us, and that's from Riverkeeper, but they've been kind of donating their time for free over the course of the last five years, and that can't continue. So what we've been advised by legal is we need to start working towards becoming an independent corporation incorporated, like a 501c3. But to do that, we also need to be able to have money to get there. So in addition to what uh, Lynn said about, you know, Dutchess County is willing to put up 25000 for three each for three years and be a voting member. Ulster County, 25000 
per year for three years, and the rest of the municipalities combined putting up 25,000, which gives us a total of an operating fund of 75,000, which we feel is enough for us to go out and work with what we call a protection coordinator, which we will hire and do full time that. In addition, Dutchess County has agreed to give us $19,999 under the $20,000 limit to help us become incorporated. And that's an important feature as well that the county is willing to do. So as you can see, both Ulster County and Dutchess County are really behind what we're trying to do and have been supportive you know, throughout this endeavor for the uh, last five years on the mission of the Hudson Council, Hudson 7, to really protect the Hudson River. So just to kind of, I'm just not going to go into detail about some of the projects, but we were the first in the state to get what was called the DWSP2, and that's the Drinking Water Source Protection Program. And that program is now we have a coordinator from the state who is working with all of the water treatment plants and is going to give us a scorecard on how we should proceed with working with analyzing the water and where the water comes from. So that's an ongoing project that's going on today. The spill prevention and response, which we talked about a little bit, which was from the Coast Guard, we were the first ones upstate, upriver, to really get an inner, a today to have a spill response and prevention tabletop drill conducted outside of the New York City Harbor. And that was held just a few months ago in just outside of the, outside of the roundout. So we've now moved where people are now thinking about us up north, which is really good. Um, we worked very well with, co with the Cornell Cooperative Extension, really on working on our watershed alliance. Al showed me a map uh, in the office back there of all of the tributaries and waterways that feed into where they go in Hudson River as part of the NRI, that's a huge concern for us as well. Because you can think about the Hudson River and what it does, but you also have to think about the estuaries that feed it. And I'm, it was nice to see that you guys care enough to look into that protection of, of the estuaries that come in. Um, so Lynn mentioned the Champaign Hudson Power Express. Uh, boy, when that started, to, when that started eight years ago, nobody cared about drinking water. Now they care about drinking water. They care the fact that when they dig that trench coming down the river, that's going to be two feet wide, eight feet deep, and stir up everything, that it doesn't impact our water. Because our wa we're going to be drawing water, all of us are going to be drawing water while that line is being laid down there. So we were successful in getting them to do a couple of things. One was to commit to a trial which was just conducted last week. Uh, and we had that, that trial was done where we did a simulated water treatment plant and had samples being done while the jet plow was going through on a, on a half mile stretch that we could collect data because they said it's safe, but we want to know that it's safe for our drinking water, which is, really, which is a really important thing. And then, I don't know if you heard, Central Hudson back in the 60s dumped a lot of coal tar. And they dumped us right just south of the of the Poughkeepsie water treatment plant and that coal tar takes up several acres and is several feet deep and they started to excavate that coal tar and when they did even though we had cautioned them that there could be contaminants that arise from that because of the sheen of oil the test that they did didn't work and it was actually in coming into the Poughkeepsie water treatment plant so we've been successful working with Central Hudson to say you need a better you need a better way to do that Hence my reason for why do we need a, pro a protection coordinator. You have, you have seven elected officials who are trying to do this in their spare time, and I'm sure as all of you can attest, we don't have a lot of spare time. We're busy all the time. And so therefore, having that help what we've had with Riverkeeper to work directly with me as chair of the Hudson 7 has been invaluable, but it's an invaluable thing that we deliver to not just here we deliver to anybody, right? So 100,000 people are going to benefit from what we do. That's and it's th questions? actually through um, Hudson 72. I now have a working relationship with the, the head of the DCWW Authority, um, where we meet monthly also. Yep. And I think that's really important, being that they control our water for us, but we now have input into what they do, and they want to know how you know our needs and how we see things too. So. I think that's a good uh, partnership that oh, absolutely. The Mike is really happy yep. about. So any questions? Yes, the, do we have to wait until your incorporation's done? When are these contributions 
Required. So no, so the first step in this step is really, there's a good question now, there's really a it's really a three-step process. First, this is an amendment to our existing bylaws. This is amendment number one that was legally drawn up that gets us now to say, <clears throat> we as a corporate, in working towards incorporated can accept these funds to work towards being incorporated. It brings Dutchess County in as, as a voting member as well. So this is step one. Step two is then, we used the $19,999 to go out and get legal to help us become incorporated, right? And then once we get incorporated, then we actually can start paying somebody. But we want to be able to, the county is willing to give us the money upon signing all unanimously now of all the seven municipalities signing this agreement. And they're willing to step forward as well as Ulster County as soon as we all agree. So there, there's no need to wait. We just need to know that you have it, and then when the time comes, we can coordinate that. Where are your bylaws? Do you have a website that we can Yes, we on? do. Okay. If you go to Hudson7.org, H-U-D-S-O-N-7, the number seven, seven, the number seven dot org, org, we have a website up in my, which has all the bylaws, all of our minutes, <clears throat> and all the activities that we've been, been working on. I have a question. Sure. Uh, are you do you are you an entity that anyone who wants to do business uh, either close to a water source or down by the uh, river would have to uh, go through or present a plan to before they can move forward? No. And are you? And my second question is: Is would this organization either now or once incorporated would it be on a state level? It will not be. It's a local level because of the this it serves this organization serves this community of users, although we have established really a great working relationship with the DEC, uh, Commissioner Sagos and the New York State Department of Health, and they are now working with us a lot in terms of the projects that we're working on. That's great. And can I ask where you get your information from? Like, how did you learn about the barges that were going to be parked on the Hudson? I'm the mayor for the village of Rhinebeck. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, in addition, you know, right, to that, we were very much involved with what was happening on the river in terms of trying to stop the barges. We were, we were actively, as a municipality, saying you can't do this. Because they, if you remember their plan, if you saw it, their barges were going to be parked right over our intakes. What a catastrophe waiting to happen. You know, it's not that they don't take protection and have double shell and do all those kind of things, but there are spills. And if it happens over any one of our intakes, number two, there was no plan based on the Coast Guard on a spill prevention and a response for anything north of here. So once we actively worked with to stop the barges, then we went into the next phase and say, we need an active spill prevention and response plan here. And we got it. Excellent. Thank you. And Hyde Park's been working all along with you. Yes, Hyde Park has been engaged since the, and they signed in, in May of 2018 as one of the municipalities. The barges were all along by Vanderbilt, if you remember. I remember them parked out there. So what are you seeing happening after three years? So at the end of three years, we're going to evaluate how we stand in terms as an organization and financially. Right, and just number the first thing will do we want to continue the partnership at the county level, right? Because that we haven't had that, so we're going into a new phase working with Dutchess County. We've always had a Dutchess County representative come to every one of our meetings and give us an update, as well as an Alter County representative, but now they become a voting member. And so, you can think about it. We at the beginning we said we didn't want to be part of like Riverkeeper because what if Riverkeeper decided to do something that we didn't want to do? So we wanted to have a little bit of an independence associated with that. But now that the county and both counties are engaged with us and working closely with us, I think it's a great partnership. But we said, let's have three years, let's figure it out. And that's really it. So we're going to decide. just a starting decide. point for the three years. Pardon? Just a starting point. The three yes. Yep. I'm looking forward to I it continuing, by the way. I just three years goes by. You know, the older I get, the faster three years goes by. <laughs> the last five years have gone by so fast. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this um, um, memo of understanding has to be signed, as you said, unanimously. 
And where the last meeting? <laughs> I mean, the others have already signed it. Uh, Rhinebeck is well, having their meeting tonight. Yeah, so town of, the town of Rhinebeck is meeting tonight, but they've given all indication that they're going to move forward. So I have a couple. I have a couple of questions or concerns. Maybe you can help me with. So I, I look at this, and I'm not being disrespectful, but I look at this as another layer of enforcement protecting the water but where's the we have layers in there from the state of new york uh dutchess county health department i don't see anything regarding dutchess county wastewater as a major player because they operate the plant and they monitor all the statistics and everything how come they're not involved or one of the key players in this uh joint venture that you have going here so dutchess county wastewater authority you're talking about that's correct so which is run which runs a hyde park water treatment plant that's correct we've met with them and they said we like what you do we like to be in, we'd like to be informed of what you do but we don't feel a need to be engaged and be a member and be a party to it and so that was their choice that's why i have the the um, ongoing uh, relationship with them because i met with the head of the authority and he said he, he wanted to keep it as it is now because of course they believe in what they do so they believe they're doing a fine job and yet um, they're happy that we're involved in the advocacy of, of things going on around the, the river no and, I, and so, I agree yeah. with you I, I i i love the concept that we're involved but i'm thinking off the top of my head for years the state and the health department the county all took care of this when you add another layer of government and another organization it just becomes more red tape and i deal with it every day with the dec and wetlands as al can tell you with our issues and it's a great idea but i just think that it's an extra layer of just nothing getting done that's my personal yeah. opinion so we're not there for enforcement number one we're there to work with all the water plants and to help them you know unite the water plants to have them work together like for instance think about the issue of stop them the the stop the mud if you remember the usopus the turbidity that came out of the usopus out of the christmas storm a year ago and how much that turbidity put into the river right there was a mechanism where we started communicating what was happening and how each plant was responding to working with that excess flow of turbidity so we were able to work with them as an advocate and then we went to stop the mud not to tell the water treatment plants so think of us as an advocate for you not as an enforcer we don't have any mechanism for passing rules or laws or regulations you know to tell the water treatment plants what they can and cannot do because you said we have i have a water treatment plant there's a lot of regulations we go by already so we're not there to change that. We're there to help the water treatment plants. And, and who, are, who are you specifically answering to? So we answer to ourselves. We don't answer to anybody. We don't report up to anybody in terms of a higher level of government authority. We are really there as an independent municipal council, as an advocate for the, protecting the drinking water on the Hudson River. And the impact is uh, such that what is a TDI that owns this cable that's coming through, listened enough to do the pilot testing that, that Hudson 7 advocated, right? Well, in, yeah, and over the course of two years, well, yeah, we still. were able to convince <laughs> them that, you know, what you say, you got to prove it. You know, give us the data so that we know that our implants and our, we're not going to be taking any contaminants into the water treatment plants during when that cable does get laid. So that project uh, was not able to move forward until it was cleared? So they now have to go through us a little bit. The, you know, Commissioner Sagos is now consulting with us in terms of, and the New York State Department of Health. Back to John's comment, regulatory. What we found out is there's not a lot of regulatory over the physical body of the river. Right? New York State Department of Health says, we care about your drinking water, but we can't say anything about the river. DE says, DEC says, we can permit you, and we can say we can approve the permit but they really don't have a lot of regulation over them what happens so we've been able to be a conduit to help work to solve that problem and protect all of our users i guess uh, adding Good on questions. to what john was saying uh, when, when you find something <coughs> or some information is brought to you that could affect the quality of the drinking water of of the river uh, how do you move forward with convincing a company as large as the one in canada bringing that that line down 
to to work with you to move forward without them saying you know we've we've got the permits that we need from right. from from the state that's all we need to do and that's exactly how it started exactly how it started over a little over two years ago they said we've been approved by the state you know we don't need you you know push the button yeah, we so we were we were the 15 million dollar uh, mortgage tax that they were looking for. well the pilot that they wanted to conduct we were just recently you know alter county rejected the pilot from them dutch we were and we worked very closely with dutchess county to say you should not approve this a pilot right because we don't a we don't know if it works and b what jobs are you bringing with just running a cable down so what development are you bringing down to it so we've been an advocate from that source on the champaign hudson power express but it really took us two years and it really was getting the state new york state department of health to recognize what we were trying to do uh, commissioner sagos of the dec to recognize what we were trying to do and we've written lots of letters and they've now listened to us and they've through their work has told this organization you got to work with the hudson seven so we've come a long ways so my question is could a, could a project be stopped without your approval could the project be stopped without our approval yes the dec could stop it yes because like, they they by information yeah. that you bring them that right you so here's the next step of what the champaign hudson power express has to do we got to, we were effective to get the pilot in and collect all the data samples and now the data samples are all being sent to a lab to be analyzed those results and the testing procedures and what needs to be done will we put into their em and cp the environmental m I forget what EMNCP, construction plan, engineering, maintenance, and construction plan, which the DEC has to sign off on. So we've gotten approval that there are test results have to go into the EMNCP before it gets approval. Okay. So this has to definitely be voted on tonight? Is that what you're saying? No, it doesn't have to, but we are, our goal is to have it done by September so that we can move forward with the county. As soon as we get approval from everybody, we can now take the next step with the county, which is to start the legal action, the legal work for the 19,000. You know we're the only ones still signing it. Well, this is the first we're hearing about it. I mean, listen, if it's been going on for two years, if, if somebody had a little prior planning and brought it to our attention a couple months ago, we could do our due diligence and read up on it i just think well this is new john it's, yeah it's I, I just think listen because i've been i'm involved with the swift and stormwater wastewater management all the regulatory i mean the new stuff that's coming out is going to be a big big burden on yep. the municipalities yep and this is the first i'm really digging into into this that's why it would be nice to read up a lot a little bit and do a little investigation but yeah. so yeah this you know we just put this proposal together two month month and a half ago by working with getting the approvals from the county and once we got the approvals from the county you know and got with them to draw up this uh moa now is why you're seeing this for the first time but we've been talking about going towards this step for a, for a long time and lynn you know has come on board and has been a great uh team player on our in our organization as well so i think you're going to start hearing a lot because of lynn's involvement do you know the off the just uh, these municipalities do you know what the population is for like the lloyd in east opus why is it the, the smaller ones compared to even us based on the hundred thousand people why are we all at the same rate is that just it, a figurative number that it, they agreed on or so when we yeah we voted on it as a council and said there's small water treatment plants and there's large water treatment plants. Like for instance, the city of Poughkeepsie water treatment facility, they pump 10 million gallons a day. Village of Rhinebeck, we pump 450,000 gallons a day, All right? So it's really based not on terms of population, but on really how big our water plants were and how many gallons. And I, we have all those metrics. I didn't bring those metrics with me in terms of which every plant and what they what they produce and what they pump through their plants and we just drew a line and said small versus large and I, we we played around with a lot of formulas to try to do it right and at the end of the day we thought this was the best way thank you 
And so far, everybody has, you know, as Lynn said, everybody has agreed uh, to move forward with this. So I'm, I'm anxious to get forward to the next step of hiring legal so that we can become a 501c3 and get this project coordinator hired. Prote so the county protection already, coordinator. already approved and committed to the, the 19-9 for you? So there's a two-step process with them. We need to have all the agreement. They then take it to their legislative body. They want to have it on their October agenda. So we need to have it by this month so they can get it on their October agenda. I think that's the purpose of the workshop, to explain as much as we can to you. And if anybody has any questions, to ask them. Yeah. Just come right out and ask whatever you want. That's the whole purpose. Yeah, we're, we're, we're an open book. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions or anything I don't. you're curious about? No. Nope. Does everybody have an understanding? Clear understanding. John? So, City of Poughkeepsie runs their own water treatment. Rhinebeck runs their own water treatment. Correct. Lloyd, do they run their own? They run their own. So. Sopis? Yes, they run their own. Uh, town of Poughkeepsie. Well, Town of Poughkeepsie and City of Poughkeepsie use the same, same Poughkeepsie, plant. same plant. And that would be the same for the Town of Rhinebeck right. and the so City there's of Right, so there's, there's five, there's seven municipalities. There's where the confusion. There's seven municipalities. And five plants. Which make up the 100,000 people, but there's only five water treatment plants. Okay. Okay. But, for instance, why there's seven is because City and Town of Poughkeepsie make two. Right. Village and Town of Rhinebeck, the Village of Rhinebeck water treatment plant, serves over 10 percent of the population of the town of Rhinebeck so we didn't include all of the town we only included the portion of the town that the water treatment plant serves out of out of the facility of the villages so but it is part of the town so village and town mm -hmm. of Rhinebeck city and town of Poughkeepsie now you get seven municipalities with five water with treatment five plants plants yeah but in in Rhinebeck where you are is it it's your water treatment plant oh absolutely See in Hyde Park, it's it's run by the Dutchess County Dutchess. Wastewater Authority, right? right. Which so is which is fine. Wouldn't it, it be Dutchess County Wastewater's responsibility to make sure that we have clean drinking water? They do. It is because you contract with them to run your facility, but we can all the work that we do benefits everybody, right? So if we if we receive information that, for instance saltwater intrusion let's talk about a little bit about saltwater intrusion right mm -hmm. this year we had a significant drought one of the things that we we started talking about and started trying to get an understanding of is how would sea level rise and drought possibly impact the front of the salt water into our water treatment plants and so we're starting to conduct meetings on that because may, this may not be the first year but anything we find, we share with everybody, right? So if we learn, as we learn, you learn, they learn, Dutchess County Wastewater Authority learns as well. Did you find that the Brack line came further north? Uh, we're still studying where it is. Okay. So that's, that's an ongoing, well, right? Well, moves because Yeah, so our fear sure. is that it will, but I don't have the evidence yet to prove that. So you're not so much a regulatory authority we are as, not as, as much as it more of an information gatherer to 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 get potential issues or problems from the yeah, drinking so, water sir, to, to yeah, the exactly like you know the spill response that's not regulatory that's putting in a prevention mechanism which we were able to do the dwsp2 is nothing more than a scorecard that says Here's that takes in the estuaries, takes in the river, and says here's the things that we have to worry about that we can then share with everybody based on the work. And that's run at the state level, right? We have a state coordinator assigned to us. So the data that we get, we give, right? But we were the advocate for getting the grant for the DWSB2 with the state. And we, were the, we got one for all of us, not just one of us, right, when we, when we applied for that grant. Are there any other municipal water 
committees like this one along the river in Westchester? Also? No. No. There's this not. There's not. But you got to remember, a lot of municipalities don't draw their water out of the river as well. Right? We are very unique right here to have a concentration of the five water treatment plants on the east and the west bank of the river that are just right here, uh, where we have this situation where we are using the river as our source of water versus wells or reservoirs um, that the other municipalities use. I'm not saying there isn't. We, I haven't studied the river all of it to let you know if there's other places that do that um, but the model that we have could be a model for any river i don't care if it's not the hudson river it could be the model for the mississippi right you know so it's it's really we're what we what we're doing is unique in terms of caring about the water which is the other organizations that are in our area you know, thought about it, but then have an active involvement in the water, in the quality of the water for drinking. Well, I don't have any further questions. I don't have any further questions. Do you have anything else? Your eyes are like cord. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for you. listening. Thank Great you very question. Much. Thank you, for you know, I'm glad that you um, uh, took the time to hear about what we're doing yeah. and get engaged in terms of. to vote and members yeah. too. So. <laughs> yeah. The more I get up on it, the better off I am. Right. Resolution 912 1 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to return the invested recreation trust funds from the town's operating bank account to the recreation trust fund bank account. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Jim, you're here, right? Can you <laughs> briefly explain why we're taking $352,561 from somewhere and putting it back where it's supposed to be? And when did it ever get removed from where from the recreational trust? And for what reason, if we know? Good evening. So uh, the previous administration decided to uh, make an investment uh, with a entity called New York Class, which is uh, an investment entity that takes municipalities' money and invests it in a way that works with uh, their uh, investing policy. And there's certain things that towns and counties can't invest in because of risk or something, but it has to be something that's very uh, low risk, et cetera, bonds, et cetera. So they go through either a New York class or some other investing structure that does that for municipalities. They took uh, $2,700,000, which they accumulated through taking funds out of the operating account from uh, the rec trust, from the highway funds, et cetera, and they put it into uh, this investment entity and uh, that was uh, November 12th 2019 on uh, December 12th one month later they took out about six hundred and forty thousand dollars because there appears to be a shortfall in the their retirement uh, payment to the New York State which is done annually in December and uh, leaving about two million dollars left um, it appears that uh, in uh, July uh, of the pre next year they removed all the funds uh, because it just wasn't producing to the percentage that I guess they were promised and so they took the two million out and put it all back into the operating account and did not uh, reallocate uh, the various funding amounts to the funds and the account numbers that they took it from so uh, 
basically it wasn't illegal what they did, but it is absolutely uh, improper accounting processes, especially against uh, best uh, accounting practices, uh, because it doesn't reflect properly the state of each account. Okay? So uh, we are now asking, or uh, the REC Trust also is, et cetera, that uh, the amount of basically $352,000 uh, that was taken from the REC Trust for this investment uh, tool be returned back to that account so that it brings it to where it's supposed to be. So this $352,000 would show up in the, uh, the fund balance as an increase if you didn't know where that really came from. Correct. Uh, basically, it uh, overinflated it, as they call it, it's about $1.9 million we claimed had an un our unassigned uh, fund balance, but technically it is $352,000 less than that. Uh, it would probably rather be, uh, it's about uh, $1.5 million is actually where it is in our uh, unassigned fund balance. Okay, and okay, that would probably go for the, the next resolution you can explain, it's probably similar. Lynn, can you read the next one, please? <clears throat> resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to transfer matching Town Hall addition funds from the Town's operating bank account to the Town Hall addition bank account. Again, it's sitting not where it belongs? Uh, so the town accepted that generous donation from John and Gloria Golden uh, and in that process the town pledged that they would match it with a million dollars uh, and this happened uh, basically uh, in June of uh, 2021. Uh, they actually didn't do any type of uh, recording of it or transferring of any type of uh, money until uh, December 28th of 2021, about six months later. Uh, the previous controller made a recording in our financial software recognizing that a million dollars was getting put into the town addition fund, which was specially created a, a sort of a restricted use fund in TD Bank. But actually, there was no physical transfer of funds. So literally, the fund still says there's only a million dollars in, in, in the TD Bank account, if you looked in our on online, web, uh, online banking structure. But in our software system, it says there's $2 million in there. So what we're saying is that we need to actually move if we're going to stay uh, true to our pledge and the fact that our accounting software already says there's $2 million in that account and there's only a million, we need to move a million dollars out of operating where it is into that fund. Again, uh, it's an improper accounting practice. Uh, because it doesn't reflect the accurate nature and realities of these accounts. You know, you can't just do it in a software system because there's no bank recs that will reflect it properly. Was that the million dollars that they wrote a check out and moved it to themselves? We we're still working out all the irregularities that have been going on at the very end of the year, but uh, we think that's what happened, that they cut a check to themselves and then redeposited into the operating account. I'm not really sure why. But, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of sketchy things were happening at the end of the year uh, by the previous uh, administration or, you know, the controller that we're still trying to get uh, our hands on. And uh, we are going to clean up all the accounting irregularities and make sure going forward into this budget for 2023 that uh, things are done in a proper way. Anyway, and as you remember, or you may have heard that the one of the last meetings we had the previous controller come in and try to explain to us that we were being misled. Is it true that we were the town was subsidizing our uh, controller that was in house with a consultant that was the previous controller? And those sums have been being paid since, what, 2015, maybe? Uh, yes, uh, the, the previous controller was having a consultancy with a person who was even the previous controller and was doing most of the advisement on certain things that, that he was saying that the previous controller should do. Um, you know, he got a pretty good consulting fee, you know, each year. Uh, we didn't total up what it is, but, you know, it uh, definitely was uh, something that the town was paying extra to have basically uh, a controller and a controller advisor. 
So the controller was getting paid by the town. We were also paying at some points up to seventy to ninety thousand dollars per year. Well, it, through an accumulation of years, it got yeah. uh, pretty substantial. Okay. Um, All right. I'd like to make. Uh, I have a question for Jim. Yep. So the previous controller hmm? needed to give a monthly statement balance to the Recreation Commission on the amount of monies that were in that trust fund. Mm -hmm. Did she report those correctly? I'm not sure what, you know, the reports were that she gave to the trust, the rec trust each month. They but would have been in, so they are in every single meeting minutes okay. about how much is in there. Uh, so at what point did you know that those funds had been moved? So you're saying she just gave like an email or she just gave some sort of thing like that or the accounting software said stuff rather than actually showing she you gave, the bank recs? Exactly. Okay. Well, then obviously she was not reporting correctly because the bank recs uh, have shown that there's only $49,000 in that bank account since way back in 2019, even yeah. earlier. I need a second for uh, hold on I got I got one other question sure so in the audit that we just reviewed I'm mm -hmm. sorry Al. that's all right I was just trying to get the motion at no no I'm trying to I'm trying to understand the whole thing I didn't see anything when the private auditor came in to say that these funds mm -hmm. were misappropriated or not done incorrectly why wouldn't that show up in that detailed audit very good question uh, seeing that we had only just started in January and uh, the audit starts in March. Uh, both Danielle and I were scrambling to find all the last year's uh, documentation, etc. The auditing firm, which has been here for a number of years and should know our finances quite intimately, in my opinion, did not discover any of this or etc. So now that we've pointed it out to them, uh, it's a little bit of a crickets down there in Westchester. And uh, although. Um, I'm not sure what type of contract we have with the current auditors, but uh, I'm already planning on going out to get an RFP from others because uh, obviously they did not discover any of this, and it was actually Danielle and myself after digging through the, rem the aftermath of the audit that we started found all these different irregularities. Thank you. Okay, you good? Yeah. All right, can we have a second on the resolution? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So that's this resolution one, correct? You're, you're, not, you're not, we're not doing, you didn't do both of them at once, this resolution one. Just want to clarify that, all right? I did one. We did one, and we did two. Yeah, well, they're separate? They were separate. Yeah. Okay. I asked for, I got it. Okay. Both on the first. Your turn, Jack. Resolution 912 3 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of High Park Building Inspector Don Westermeyer, Deputy Building Inspector Richard Longdike, and Fire Inspector Peter Longy to attend the Mid Hudson New York State Building Officials uh, Annual Business Meeting and Conference Wednesday, October 26th, and Thursday, October 27th. 2022 at the Poughkeepsie Grand 40 Civic Center Plaza, Poughkeepsie, New York, 12601. John, would you read the dollar value that's attached to that? It's on the third whereas. Uh, may it be resolved that the town board does also hereby authorize a total payment of $405 to the Mid Hudson NYSBOC, as well as reimbursement for travel and any necessary business expenditures deemed appropriate and reasonable. Won't be bad. It's down at the Poughkeepsie Grand this time. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carried. Resolution 912 4 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of High Park Town Board to approve the purchase of two new dump bodies for the Town of High Park Highway Department's one ton vehicles. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Um, just so everybody knows, these dump bodies are going to save the town a considerable amount of money because, as everybody knows, the uh, to purchase a truck is extremely high and takes up to 10 to 12 months to get 
whereas we can take the bodies because their salt is just destroying them, and then we can purchase these um, new dump bodies to put them on, and we'll get much more time out of that than we would even a new truck. Thank you. Next. Resolution 912-5 of 2022, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to designate the primary and alternate representative for the Hudson River Drinking Water Inter-Municipal Council Hudson 7 for 2022-2023. All right, may I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Al, is there any way that we could put this on hold to the next meeting? I'd like to really research this. I don't feel comfortable voting on this tonight, so I don't want to screw up everybody else. Uh, I'd like to do a little due diligence on this. Would it be okay to go to Monday? The special meeting on yes, the, yes, yes. Is, is that okay? Oh, yeah. Looking so at you. Your vote. Yes. You have to make a motion. We have to make a motion, a motion to motion and a second and vote. It would be right for uh, resolution six to be pushed to other business, town business, for the special meeting on Monday. May I have a motion? Make a motion. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? All right. Carried. So we'll take that to Monday also. Resolution 912-7 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Pike Park Town Board to approve the request by Dutchess County and Enhanced 911 for the private drive name of Highbury Ridge for the Highbury Estates Project, 64 Falk Hill Road. May I have a second? I'm going to recuse myself. This is one of our projects that we're working on, so I'm going to recuse myself. Okay. Second. So moved. Okay. Done. Yes, in favor, yes. All in favor? Yes. Yep. Any opposed? John is recused. Okay. Motion carries. Resolution 912-8 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of High Park Town Board to approve the application submission of the New York State DEC Zero Emissions Vehicle Infrastructure Grant application. All right. A second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 912-9 of 2022. Resolution adopting a SEQR determination for non-significance for proposed local law number C of 2022 entitled A, local law amending the Town of High Park Town Code to amend chapter 108 zoning Article 23, Residential Care Facilities. So we make the motion. Okay. May I have a second? Second. second. Oh, great. What? It was done. Don made the motion. All right, but we're on resolution nine. This is a lot. I think I mixed up. The 10 was pulled, right? 10 was pulled. Yeah, I must have pulled it before. Okay. Do we have a. Can I have discussion on this before we vote? Excuse me? Discussion before we vote? Go ahead. Because you're trying to look it up. Could you please explain? Yes. Um, just for clarification, how, uh, for example, the added sewer and septic and added water, right, because of the number of increased units, would not have an impact on the environment? If I read the, the report right, it said that there wasn't really significant um, impact. Could you just explain that? This is for the secret. Well, I know the, uh, the uh, water is municipal there at that facility. Okay. Um, it comes right on down through there. Um, and I know that the septic has been sized and there's plenty of ex expansion area. That's okay. the information that I have. Okay. And at the last workshop in March, 
They said um, they were going to look into Poughkeepsie providing the septic. Is that happening? Is what happened with that? I, I, I do not know, but I know that there is sewer uh, one, yes. one, one street over in close proximity if they go through another adjoining neighbor's parcel. I think they were trying to, to have some discussions on that. Mm -hmm. That's the last I, I heard. Because I just was trying to, I looked at the environmental study of, you know, the original one, and then the, this last one, it just sounded like insignificant meant that there were no real differences. So if that's true, that's good. Have you got any information on that? The, um, she asked about the water and sewer, and I know that the municipal water runs through um, right in front of the place, so that's no impact. And I know that the sewer, they, they have plenty of ground space in the back to increase the field, and they were so, also talking about possibly hooking to the town of Poughkeepsie sewer, which is one street over. Mm -hmm. and we're trying to work on that. Well, yeah. Okay, do we have a first motion in this? Who read that? Don read, I second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. This is the other That was pulled. Resolution 10 was pulled, so. Resolution 9 12 11 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to schedule a special meeting for Monday, September 19, 2022, to discuss the town's submission and intent purpose for the Downtown Revitalization Initiative New York Forward Grant application. Okay, so we make a motion on this one or just to replace? So we need a motion and a second to amend. All right, we may need a second to uh, replace this resolution um, of 22 in its entirety and place it with the following um, resolution. All in favor? Aye. I'm sorry. I, what are no, we, no, no, no. We're, on? we're on uh, number 11. She just read. Yep. Yes. I, I, look, you have a second, number 11. Oh, oh so oh, motion sorry. to amend. Motion I get it. Yes. I motion to um, to amend this resolution. So this okay. is a second. 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 Oh, wait, All in no. favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Now where's the amendment? Oh, where's the second page? Right. Look at that. That's it. So now you need a motion and a second. I know. So what's so what do we need? I think initially there was a, oh, okay. a, so, a I'm resolution going. to schedule a special meeting just for a workshop, and now you're also going to conduct some business at the meeting. So that's why the Correct. resolution was amended. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you it's see not just for that. Oh, there's okay. less where as they had it. So you need a motion and a second as right. amended. I need on the amended one a motion. Make a motion. Don in a second. Second. John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, amended motion can't carry. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's your turn. Resolution 912-12 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to accept the Dutchess County 2022 Veterans Micro Grant Award for the Town of Hyde Park's Hometown Heroes Banner Project. Okay, may I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We will no longer be the only town that doesn't have hometown heroes flags. Resolution 912 13 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to appoint Kathleen Hopp as a part-time secretary for the Town of Hyde Park Zoning Board of Appeals. So this is to add that this year. There's an amended amendment to right. this one too. So motion in a second. So I'll motion to uh, amend. Okay, and have, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now. We need a motion on the amended resolution. Right. Mm -hmm. 
as amendments. Mm -hmm. Make a motion now. Okay. Okay, John. We have a second. Second. Don. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 912 14 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of High Park Town Board to accept the Dutchess County 2022 Municipal Investment Grant awarded for the Town of High Park Police Department's Explosive Detection and Tracking Canine Unit Program. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Resolution 912-15 of 2022, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to waive the notice requirement with respect to the liquor license application for the Culinary Institute of Mer America doing business as The Egg, American Bounty, The Bocuse Restaurant, Katerina de Medici, St. Andrew's Post Road Brew House, and Marriott Pavilion Conference Center in the Town of Hyde Park. May I have a second? Second. Done. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 912-16 of 2022. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to approve the request from the Culinary Institute of America to conduct a fireworks display on Monday, on Monday, Friday. Monday's a typo. That's a typo. <laughs> on Friday, September 16th, 2022, in the town of Hyde Park. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 912-17 of 2022, resolution authorizing the release of the balance of escrow for a completed project that was reviewed by the town of Hyde Park Zoning Administrator. All right, I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. things for uh, new business um, if Chief Benson could come up and give us an update on the uh, missing persons that's out there I would appreciate that good evening uh, thank you for giving me a few minutes of time to talk about a, a case that we're working on uh, many of you know about it because I've spoken to several of you uh, personally about it. So uh, the town of High Park Police Department on August 31st received a report of a 31-year-old uh, missing person. Uh, he's described as a white male, 5'9", 110 pounds, goes by the name of Christopher Impatori. Uh, we're in our 17th day right now of him missing. He wasn't reported to missing to us until August 31st, but he actually was missing since the 27th of August. Uh, Christopher uh, suffers from autism. He's been diagnosed with autism. So he, his ability to communicate with uh, the general public and the police and everyone is very limited. Uh, we, we have had contact with Christopher in the past um, and we're really concerned with uh, locating Christopher very concerned about his well-being. There has been several searches done in the area where he lives at 40 Haviland Road. We have over 500 man hours invested in a very organized search by the New York State Forest Rangers. Um, I want to take this time right now to, to thank our partners here. Uh, I'm very proud of the town of High Park, how we all come together when, when it's really needed. 
Uh, we're very lucky here to have incredible fire departments, including the Roosevelt Fire Department, that pretty much let us take up uh, home in, in their firehouse on 9G. Uh, their members and the chief staff, Jeff and, and Lou Darrow, I've spent uh, numerous hours on the, con uh, on the telephone with them, talking to them about this case, and we all are taking it very personal. Um, it's, it's keeping us up at night, and, and everyone is in this together. And every time that I need anything, I reach out to all the fire departments, whether it's High Park, Fairview, Pleasant Valley, whatever we need, they're always there to help, whether it's directing traffic or, or anything that we need. And this time, they really have stepped up and not only lent us their firehouse, but they also have joined in the search and spent many hours uh, in the woods with us searching for them. Uh, the New York State Police have been out with their cadaver dogs. They've been out with their bloodhound. They've been out with drones. And they've been out with the helicopter with infrared uh, sensing. The Dutchess County Sheriff's Office has given us um, all their resources, whether it's UTVs, whether it's drones and detectives, uh, road deputies to help search the woods. I was on a search team the other day with one of the road deputies who, who uh, you know, was very selfless and, and ruined his uniform, basically, as we were going through swamps and, and didn't hesitate and, and didn't back down. And, and I was very proud of the whole entire search crew that I was with, my personally, myself. Um, and the New York State Forest Rangers are absolutely incredible when it comes to organizing these, these searches. And, and we feel that we've searched um, a large, probably 95% of the area between Cream Street to Route 9 from Cromelbo Road all the way down to East Dorsey Lane. And, and we've gone through swamps. We had areas that we couldn't get into uh, on foot, and the Sheriff's Office and State Police were able to come in with their drones and go over top of those areas so we could clear them and feel confident that there was no one in there. Uh, we found no signs of, of him being in the woods. Christopher's a, a chain smoker, and he smokes a lot of cigarettes, and that is what he does to help calm himself down when he's agitated. We saw no no signs of any types of cigarettes in the woods, no um, piles of, of cigarette butts anywhere where a fire may have been started, any new type of garbage, whether it's water, whether it's food wrappers or anything of that nature. Um, so when Christopher left his house about 3 o'clock in the morning on the 27th of August, he was wearing uh, <coughs> dark colored jeans, uh, Nike, black and white sneakers. He had a black and white or dark colored uh, flannel shirt and it was covered by a very uh, bright orange sweatshirt that we believe he was wearing over top of that flannel shirt at the time uh, so obviously now with the weather getting warm he probably is not wearing the same same clothing um, the pictures that we have sent out was one of the most recent pictures that the family had but they said that he had been letting his hair grow so his hair is growing out on the sides and and he stopped taking care of himself so he doesn't look as groomed as he does in the picture that we have here now. Uh, we received several tips from, from people in the community as far away as Westchester with possible sightings. We followed up on every single tip that we've had received. So please don't stop sending in any tips or anyone that you think may, may be uh, Christopher because he, he's not going to come up and identify himself. From what we've been told, um, working with the family, is that he did not have any identification on him. He did not have any bank card or any debit card or any way of, of obtaining money. And uh, he had a cell phone that had no service. It was only a Wi-Fi use only, and that cell phone was left uh, in his residence when he left. So in the past, Christopher, we, we've received complaints where Christopher had been missing, and he would go into the woods and be in the woods for several days. But generally, the one trigger that would bring him out would be the rain. So when he didn't come home on the 27th and we had a couple days of heavy rain, uh, his mother became very concerned that, that he was missing and reported him missing. Um, so I know that there's been talk of uh, civilians in our residents because they're so good and so caring that they want to go out and conduct searches of their own. But please, I, I warn you not to do that on your own without having the professionals to help you because the woods are very rocky here. As John and, and Al, you know from doing construction here, there's a lot of rocks back there, there's a lot of cliffs back there. And if you're not careful and you're, you're not, don't know what you're doing, somebody can really become injured. And the last thing we want to do is have someone injured or, or die trying to search for somebody in areas that we more than likely already have uh, searched. So if you're interested in searching, if you want to call the High Park Police Department, leave your name and phone number. 
Um, we'll leave that information for Detective Tucker and, and Lieutenant Koch, who's heading this, this missing person investigation. Uh, he's not here today because I sent him home because he's been working countless hours on this case, and he's, uh, he's, he's exhausted, to be honest with you. He's exhausted. So I, I sent him home today, and, and I came here in his place. Um, we're, we're all taking this very serious. Um, we're all very concerned. What I can ask is anyone um, within the town of High Park, if you have sheds, you have any outbuildings, you have any boats, you have any vacant cars, you have anything in, in your yard or in your um, neighborhood that somebody could uh, look for shelter under, please take a look. Uh, we, we did go through many yards while we were searching these, and um, the residents that we did encounter were very helpful, very understanding and um, offered up anything that they could. We are looking through some people's uh, home video system. Most people have some type of recording system on their home now, whether it's a ring doorbell or it's other types of uh, uh, recording devices to help record things that are going on on your property. Uh, trail cameras that are in the woods. Uh, I know it's getting ready to be hunting season here and a lot of people that uh, are hunters will be out in the woods scouting and things. So. Please check on your tree stands in the woods, check on your trail cameras, see if you have anything, uh, even if it's not just the time that he went missing. Any time throughout the time that he's been missing for the last 17 days, anything will help us um, put this together and any, any little clue of what direction maybe he went. Um, but we need everyone's help to come together and if you wanna help us, please, Again, take a look around your yard, take a look at your neighbor's yard. If you know there's a vacant home near you, give us a call, let us know so we can go and check on that home and see if we, we, can, we can locate him. So he left the home with two large like laundry bags. They either say laundromat on them from the 9G uh, laundromat just in the town of Poughkeepsie, just over the town line, or they say laundry on them. So they're like the nylon bags with the long string on them. So we don't know what he had in them, but we, you know, know that he left with at least one and possibly two because there's another one that's missing. So we don't know if he had both of them in his hands or if he had one inside of the other bag. So really it's only one bag, but we all know what those laundry bags look like. And it says laundry laundry or laundromat right on the side of those bags. So um, please, if if we could, you know, all check, check around your home, uh, check any bodies of water that may be on your home. Some people own large pieces of property with ponds and things in there. Please look for any signs or anything that that you feel may be of interest to us. The smallest little thing could be something that we're looking for. So please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're there 24 hours a day, 845-229-9340. And uh, please keep them in your in your thoughts and your prayers. Thank you for reading something else. Sure. Uh, Chief, just one question. Yes. Like how far do you think he may have gone? So you think he, he's still within the town, or could he have traveled? It's, he's gone a long time, and you so can, then, you know, but... That's a great question. So the New York State Forest Rangers have um, a formulation of how far somebody can travel on foot without stopping seeking shelter and without food and without water. So we've searched that distance already, what we feel could be. Um, his mother always said he never went far into the woods. So I'm hoping that maybe someone picked him up and gave him a ride and is taking care of him and really hasn't reported it yet or we haven't talked to the right person yet. Um, but the forest and uh, New York State Forest Rangers are, you know, have, have done that calculation. The, the, the way they methodically do things and the way they plan things are, is absolutely incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, I've been a part of several searches with them, but that, that's part of their calculations that they take into place. Um, so Supervisor Torgiani asked me to, to read a, um, a thank you letter that I'm very, very happy and pleased to read. Um, this letter was sent to me from the Chief Marketing Officer and Executive Vice President of Commercial Sales for Sig Sauer Firearms. Uh, Dear Chief Benson, on July 15, 2022, Officer Justin Felicello was off duty and attending a Sig Sauer Experience Center grand opening on his personal time. While walking through the food truck area, Officer Felicello quickly assessed that another patron was in distress, immediately went into action performing the Heimlich maneuver on a choking victim. He dislodged the food caught into the victim's throat. It was truly a scary moment as others panicked and froze. I wanted to take this time to recognize Officer Felicello's quick action and selfless act 
and how grateful not only the victim and his family are, but all of us at Sig Sauer for his willingness to assert himself and take charge of a potentially critical situation. As a police officer, you are never really off duty, and we recognize and appreciate all of law enforcement's commitment to public safety. Please accept a small token appreciation with the enclosed six hour items for you and your department, and certainly Officer Felicello. I'd also like to extend an open invitation to come and visit our headquarters and to our factory at any time. Just let me know. So right after this occurred, uh, Officer Felicello called me on the phone, and he was very, uh, very emotional, and I was quite nervous when I received these phone calls from my officers uh, uh, when they're when they're off duty and he he'd gone through uh, the scenario with me and told me what had occurred and I'm very proud of every single one of the men and women that work for this police department but especially Justin Felicello for the amount of time that he puts out on his own time to train himself to become better at at his job and at his craft and he brings all of that back and trains our officers with the information and, and the training that he receives that he pays for on his own and goes to, which he's currently away right now at a training that he's going to come back and bring back to our department. Um, but this just shows, like it says here, that we're never off duty, right? And Justin is always one to step up whenever anything is needed or whenever I'm in a crunch and I say, I need somebody, but I can't afford to pay him, Justin's always at the front of that line willing to help. So am I surprised by this action? Absolutely not. I'm proud, and I feel like a proud parent right now of, <laughs> of one of my young officers and for what he did, and, and he made a difference that day. And, and our officers make a difference every single day. And that's why I am so proud of all of our members of our police department, but especially in this instance, it shows the training that Justin has put himself through, the training that we provide him here at the police department, that he was willing to use that training to help save another person's life without even blinking. He never even stopped to give him his name. He never stopped to find out the name of the person. They found out through other people who he was. He didn't look for a pat on the back. He didn't do it and sit there and wait for everybody to run to him. He gave him the Heimlich maneuver, saved him, and walked away. So it took a little while for them to track down who he was. And I personally spoke to uh, Tom Taylor uh, from Sig Sauer, who personally called me before he sent this letter um, to just tell me about, about uh, the incident and Officer Felicello and, and, and his commitment to, to what we do every day in law enforcement. So I'm glad that they, you were able to have this here so I could read this uh, so everyone understands a little bit about some of the things that we do when we're not working. Thank you. Very good. We have one other letter that came from a constituent um, that doesn't want their name known, so we're just going to read it. Uh, we would like to thank our highway department for their hard work regarding the paving of South Cross Road. The town has re re received a lot of nice compliments on how amazing it looks and how nice it is to drive on it now. They really did an outstanding job. So, Howie, once again, you get a big kudos from the board. Okay, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn, unless anybody else has anything else. You got a couple more housekeeping things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ward, ward 3 was extremely extremely busy, Has a, have a lot of things going on. So one of them is the missing person, and I th thank you, Chief, and thank Paul Katcha for all the hours and everybody, your staff, but also uh, the highway department, uh, Howie's crew, also came up and did not only South Cross Road, but they did Valk Hill Drive up in Ward 3, which they did a phenomenal job, um, and uh, uh, they really get a, deserve a nice thank you because all the all of Howie's employees did a beautiful job and they worked hard and they got it done before school was out so that worked out good. I appreciate that and the board appreciates it. Um, we've been having a lot of, as the chief can tell you, we've been having a lot of complaints in Ward Three for excessive speeders. And now that school's open, we ask everybody if they can please slow down. Um, the main roads that are numerous complaints are East Dorsey Lane, um, Creek Road, where the four-way stop is, where the fire training facility, um, and Creek Road heading north. 
up to uh, Violet Avenue or 9G, and we had a lot of situations and a lot of complaints on Haviland Road. Uh, Paul Katcha has taken the speed radar enforcement mechanism and plopped it out on each of the streets, and we were overwhelmed by the number of speeders that we had and the cars and people not paying attention of, uh, you know, and going extremely fast. So with that being said, I asked the public out there to please slow it down a little bit so that we don't have any bad incidences because with the school buses and the kids crossing the roads and on the blind curves and new pavement, um, it, it could be problematic. With that being said, also in regards to the town court, just give you a little information. I know during COVID things were kind of laxed and the tickets and violations that were at the High Park Police Department kind of been sitting in the filing cabinets for the last couple of years due to High Park, uh, New York State basically saying that you can't suspend somebody's driver's license if you have a violation and all these kind of weird laws that doesn't give us any mechanism as a town to collect fines and collect or punish somebody that has speeding ticket or violations. The uh, High Park Court in conjunction with the judges and of course my right hand man here, uh, Don, the deputy supervisor, we've been over to the court on several occasions and as of September 7th, we sent out or the court has sent out 632 letters of people that owe fines since 2018 and just at the basic projection of them fines we have an outstanding total of a hundred and eight thousand dollars that are sitting in that filing cabinet that uh, we're trying to collect the good news is um, like I say the letters just went out a couple days ago and to date we collected over almost three thousand dollars so people are starting to get them letters and we're saying, hey, if you don't pay your fines and don't pay your penalties or notify the court, we're going to come after you. And it's putting a scare in people. And hopefully we can start getting some of that revenue that's uh, been sitting in the filing cabinets and uh, get back on track. Um, one other, two other things is the Paul Techmeyer Memorial. Um, we had the ceremony for 9-11. Al came out and did a beautiful job speaking. The Paul Techmeyer Memorial Committee, I'd like to give a good thank you and also to the Cub Scouts. They did a beautiful job landscaping, preparing all the grounds over Hackett Hill. Uh, the place was impeccable. It was very nice. And also another good shout out to our supervisor. Uh, I don't know if anybody drove through the Union Cemetery lately. The, the, the lawn is mowed, everything's cut, clean. We're getting it back to where it needs to be, like the supervisor promised everybody out there, and uh, the cemetery is really starting to shape up. So I thank you for that, too. That's all I got. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> all right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Thank you.